Hello and welcome to another edition of Conspirator Brooks Polis. This is my Polis for the week of October 28th, 2020. Yes, October's almost over. Halloween is right around the corner, which we can't really participate in very well because of COVID. Yay! A Saturday Halloween, which is a, you know, rare, fun thing, is sort of ruined by having to be socially distant and all that stuff. So hopefully you found some alternative to having some fun for Halloween this year. Um, I don't know if my kids are going to dress up. Um, we'll see. I think that uh, they're going to get some candy from me and fr from our close neighbors uh, that we've been on proximity with. Uh, but uh, other than that, not much else. So have a happy Halloween and stay safe. But let's get right into the pull list. So first up, we have Action Comics number 1026. Uh, I picked up the variant cover because uh, John Romita Jr. art is still in the book and on the covers and I'm, I don't like it. Um, the story is okay. It's not um, it's not the best, especially since it's very difficult to get into with the Romita Jr. art. Um, but uh, I still like Bendis' writing on it and we'll see where it goes. It's supposed to be uh, wrapping up, I think, I think Bendis is wrapping up towards the beginning of the year on his uh, Superman stuff. So it's been a decent run on uh, on it for him and I've enjoyed it. Next up we have Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen's Ascender number 14. Uh, really love Ascender, it's great. It's a great continuation of Descender. Uh, I always say this on the podcast, or oh, sorry, on, on the videos here, but you should definitely check out Descender and Ascender. They're really, really good. Next up is a uh, Joker War Collateral Damage tie-in, uh, and it's the last issue of this series, and that is Batgirl and number 50. Uh, a, a lot of speculators are going and sna snacking, snagging this book up because it's the first appearance of Batwoman from the um, CW show, uh, Ryan something. I can't remember what the name of the character is. Uh, it's supposed to be in here, so who knows? But uh, if you're a Batgirl fan and you're already getting it and it's on your pull list, you're fine. But if you're trying to grab the copy because it's part of Collateral Damage, who knows if there's enough for the Collateral Damage people and the speculators. So, good luck. Next up, we have Batman Superman at number 13. Uh, Williamson's done a fantastic job with this team-up book. Um, I really enjoy it and it is super, super cool. Next up, we have probably the biggest book of the week and that is Batman Three Jokers number 3. Uh, if your shop is cool, you will get a Red Hood and Joker trading card there. Like that. Yep, you'll get one of those uh, with a, per the purchase of it. Um, but this is the final issue in the Three Jokers story. And man, oh man, does it really, really kind of set the stage for kind of Batman going forward and Joker going forward for that matter. Uh, if they keep it, it is it is a detrimental change uh, to the uh, mythos of both Joker and Batman, uh, but it's also very important, and it's really deep and cool. Um, a lot of people, if you've been online, have been slamming it, uh, especially for things with the relationship between uh, Batgirl and Jason and, and uh, Red Hood and all that stuff. So there's a lot going on in it. It's a deeper read than most. That like I think people have a tendency to to at first not like something that might be changing or might be status quo establishing uh but yeah it's really good i really enjoy it if you haven't read three jokers you need to be it's fantastic next up we have dark knight's death metal rise of the new god we have a one shot that's going to carry us through to this the end issues of uh death metal but uh i've liked the lay I, i've liked the layout of how this or death metal has been especially with the first one and this one where they kind of have the main series but then they have these one shots and they have tie-ins, but the tie-ins don't dominate the entire line of books. The only tie-in that is going through death metal is the one in Justice League. And I've really enjoyed it and it's fit really well. Um, but I've been enjoying Dark Knight's death metal and I can't wait to see what happens in that issue. And for those of you who are curious, Dark, uh, death metal is going to lead into future state. So it's just regular, it's transitioning right into it. So... Uh, it might not be an event that's affecting everything, but the aftermath of the event is affecting everything. But it's affecting everything, I think, in a good way that we can, that hopefully people will uh, attach onto with Future State. I'm excited for Future State to see what they have in store for us, um, especially with uh, just the uh, scope of what they're trying to do. So, who knows? Next up is Justin Jordan's uh, Dead Body Road number five. 
I'm not sure if this is the last issue. Um, Mini series have been going five issue, four, five, or six issues. Most of the time they're six, but I'm not sure. But I love Dead Body Road. The first one was amazing. The second one's been really good as well. And I definitely recommend that series of books, the Dead Body Road stuff. Definitely something you should read. Next up, uh, the Tyrion the Fourth uh, Department of Truth number two. Uh, this is one of the variant covers. I did not get the main cover. This is the one I picked out and decided to get. The first issue was good. I enjoyed it. The only issue I had with it was that the art is a little jarring and takes some getting used to, um, especially just how dark it is. Um, I understand the the direction they went with it, um, but uh, part of me wonders if a different artist would have been better. Uh, but who knows? Uh, I'm just spitballing. So, but yeah, check it out. It's good stuff. Next up, we have uh, Detective Comics number 1029, and it's introducing a new character, I guess. So, people are going to probably go nuts. So, if you're trying to get your detective, good luck with it. Um, I'm reading Detective. It's great. Again, uh, Tomasi's fantastic, hitting it out of the park with it. it he's great. Next up, we have uh, Flash number 764. Now, Williamson has been off Flash. The last issue was kind of a like a filler, had a filler issue feel to it. Uh, so we'll see what this issue has in store for us. Um, but it's cur I'm curious to see where Flash goes, especially off such an, a really, really solid run uh, by Williamson. And a, in fact, a really solid run since the New 52 with, with Flash. So Flash has been a really solid title for a long time. And it has a, gr a bunch of great runs in it, which you should definitely check out. Wade, Johns, uh, there was a couple more, uh, the Manipool, which is the New 52 run, uh, and Williamson's run. Those are the ones that come to mind. There's a, probably a handful of others, but I'm there. Uh, it's definitely one that has a, a series that has a lot of good stuff. Next up, we have uh, Justice League Dark number 27. Uh, apparently, they're still fighting the Upside Down Man. Uh, it's been going on for a long time, so we'll see if, uh, if, if, it, if it finishes up. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying Justice League Dark. I really enjoy the new 52 Justice League Dark. It's a group of characters that's really, really cool. Next up is a book that comes out I think, every six months, every three months. I don't remember, uh, but it's Greg Rucka's uh, Lazarus Risen. Uh, they've gone to making these a little bit thicker format books and releasing them on a uh, more, like a more distant schedule. Uh, so, but I really love Lazarus. It, it's a really great book. Uh, it's again one of those slow books. I think if I go back and reread it, it'll probably be a little bit more cohesive. But because um, it's a little bit hard to remember where everything. It has started and gone and all the interest, like the little details in the stories, but I've been enjoying it. It's really great stuff. Uh, next up, we have uh, Legion of Superheroes at number 10. Uh, looks like Superboy and uh, Saturn. Is it Saturn? No. Saturn Girl? Yeah, Saturn Girl. Uh, kiss for the first time. So, ooh, yeah, fun stuff. Venice has done a fun, fun job on Legion. Uh, it's really, really cool. Next up, we have uh, <clears throat> Red Hood Outlaw number 50. Uh, so we were, we are definitely getting out of the Labdell run, I think with this issue, um, going forward. I don't know who's in it. I don't even remember if it's going, continuing after. I think it's continuing past 50, but we'll see. Red Hood Outlaw has been good. I've been enjoying it. This whole run has been decent and a good story. So, uh, and like the early new 52 one was good as well, but there was a couple just iterations in there in the middle that were like, ugh, not the best. So. Next up, we have Stranger Things, number two of four for Science Camp. Um, I'm really enjoying all of these uh, Stranger Things. Um, you know, you know, they fit right in the universe. This one deals with, um, I can't remember the character's name, uh, at, at summer camp where he meets his girlfriend. Um, but it's definitely, uh, like, I definitely really enjoy the uh, what um, Jody Hauser's doing in adding to the, the, the canon of the Stranger Things universe. So uh, it makes me want to go out and... Uh, check out the book novelization that they have of a Stranger Things of a story first in the Stranger Things mythos. Uh, if anybody has read that or um, recommend or you know knows somebody who has, let me know comments below what you think. Next up, we have Suicide Squad number ten. Uh, Ted Cord's gonna get uh, people are gonna get revenge on Ted Cord, but uh, I don't know if that's Ted Cord. So, mm, spoiler. Uh, I've liked Suicide Squad. It's been fun. Uh, Tom Taylor's done a great job on it. And uh, yeah. 
Next up is a <clears throat> Eastman and Lard book. Uh, if for those of you that don't know, uh, or Laird Lard, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was created by these two guys a long time ago. Uh, they split off, and then now they're back together to tell the uh, uh, one more story for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and that is the Last Ronin. Now this book might look a little bit big. It is. It's slightly wider, and definitely taller. This uh, this is a golden age comic book bag and board uh so for this to think i think be covered completely you would have to use a magazine bag and board which would then put huge like you would have much more space on either side and you would have a lot of space on top and the thing would move around uh, i'm going to check this story out uh, i mainly got this because on the podcast uh we were giving toby crap for not being able to use the hub and making sure things were uh, put on order because apparently IDW limited uh, did not um, wait till FOC <clears throat> on this book to print it. They printed it beforehand and underprinted it. Uh, so it is going to be one of those books that speculators are going to be trying to nab up as fast as possible uh, because stores were also allocated to their numbers. So uh, yeah, so if you were looking forward to checking this out, uh, you might want to uh, get down to your local shop as fast as possible or it's going to be up on eBay. Uh, I don't know how much it's going for right now, but it's definitely something that people are going for. It's a five issue ser mini series, um, and uh, it's roughly eight ninety nine an issue. So if that's standoffish, who knows? Um, but I'm curious to see what it's all about, uh, at least with the first issue. Uh, so yeah. But uh, Toby did use the hub and did get his own copy, and then decided to get an extra copy for some reason. But he's just like. All right, let's keep going. Almost there. Next up, we have Undiscovered Country number nine. Charles Soule and uh, Scott Snyder's um, basically look at an isolated America that is weirdly changed, and uh, I've been I've been enjoying it. There's been ups and downs to the series, but overall, I think it's a really great concept, and I, I'm, and I think they really have something uh, with the book. Next up, we have Wonder Woman number seven sixty five. Uh, man, the creative team changed has not slowed this book down. It's amazing. Uh, art is amazing. You should be checking out Wonder Woman. Done. Um, <clears throat> I did get some variant covers this week. A uh, fair amount, actually, because, you know, when you have a ni regular 19-issue pull list, because Jesus Christ is a big week, you also have a lot of variants. So I did pick up the Terry Dotson variant for Batgirl number 50, uh, which is really cool. Uh, Brooks did a, Max Brooks did the cover for Batman Superman number 13, so I like that one that up as well batman three jokers of course had all those variants and so here is the cover b variant for red hood and uh there's the one in 25 variant right there which is the co weirdly colored one uh we have the killing joke one with the with the camera very cool stuff there uh we also have the comedian one from uh yeah the comedian one there with the with hint with a wedding ring so check that one out uh and also we have the crazy deformed uh joker there so three jokers need to get it uh i liked the cover for uh death metal uh dark knight's death metal rise of the new god so i snagged that one up that's this is the one in 25 variant uh i've been getting the flash ones so i picked up the flash variant there for 764 yeah 764 uh, I like the Justice League Dark 27, but man, does Wonder Woman have some 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 hips and thighs on that one. Mm. Uh, next up is Legion of Superheroes number 10, which I thought was a really cool cover with like Triplicate Girl and Saturn Girl. And I'm blanking on these two right now. Sue me. Uh, Red Hooded Outlaw, I picked up the Philip Tan cover, but realized, man, that handlebar is exceedingly long and weirdly n doesn't look right but hey who knows uh suicide squad of course had a variant for issue 10 which i picked up there undiscovered country had a pretty cool johnson variant so i snagged that one up as well and of course wonder woman 765 the wonder woman variants have been an am amazing and so i snagged that one up as well uh, that's it for my pull and my variants i did pick up a couple uh, graphic novels this week. Uh, Shazam! The Deluxe Edition has finally come out. This is the oversized edition of the Jeff John stuff that was released in just in the backs of Justice League as well as Justice League Zero. Um, so if you are ever curious about Shazam, 
this is what you need to check out. It's really great stuff. I really enjoy it. Uh, and I'm finally happy to have a deluxe. I have a small hardcover version, which I'm probably going to get rid of uh, on eBay. Uh, but uh, and not that I don't want it. It's just I'm like it, it's one of the stories I'd like having a deluxe. And then I also picked up the uh, She-Hulk Omnibus uh, by Dan Slott, uh, which if you're curious about the Dan Slott run, this is what you should pick up. I want to tell you, click on the link at conspiratorbrock.com um, or I will put a link in the description below. I'll put a link in the description below. Right now on pre-order, this is 40 bucks. It's a steal on Amazon. So if you want to check out the She-Hulk Omnibus, I highly recommend uh, clicking on the Amazon link and uh, picking up it for 40 It was 40 when I recorded this. $39.99. So be on the lookout because that's it's $100 normally. So yeah, uh, I'm curious about it. I've heard mixed reviews about the whole run, but I wanted to check it out. I really want the 90s uh, She-Hulk collected in a uh, omnibus form, but they don't have the whole series. They've only done the John Byrne stuff. Uh, so I'm waiting for that. And I'm also waiting for an older version she-Hulk. She-Hulk's always been a character that I've really wanted to check out and enjoy. And I read the, the stuff um, by Soul and I really enjoyed it, but I wasn't a huge fan of the art. Um, I do need to go back and get the collected edition of that. But uh, yeah, She-Hulk's one of those fun characters, I think. And it is also the end of the month, which means it's previews time, which this is the November 20 previews, issue 386. This is for stuff on sale in January of 2021. Uh, so yeah, so there's a bunch of, you know, you want to make sure you grab your Marvel previews, a whole bunch of stuff going on with that King and Black Venom stuff. Um, I did want to point out to you guys, uh, where is it? I should have looked it up before, but that's okay. It's pretty much alphabetized by, by creator or by, yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, let me see. Um, so basically, uh, I've been doing some Kickstarters, and one of the Kickstarters I did was Aster of Pan. Uh, it's by a company called Magnetic, um, and they are releasing their YA uh, Aster of Pan uh, as a hardcover uh, through retailers and normal retailers and stuff, not Kickstarter, but re normal in this previews. So it's coming out in January for uh, those that are interested in checking this out. Um, I did the Kickstarter through it, so there's a whole bunch of other stuff that comes with it. But Magnetic seems to be a company that like starts on Kickstarter and then jumps over to uh, getting done in pre, like doing a regular run of it. But the one you get on Kickstarter is exclusive to Kickstarter. It kind of starts the whole thing and gets the ball rolling for them to, I guess, do production, um, bigger production. Um, I'm really excited to check it out, Aster of Pan. So if you weren't there to do the Kickstarter, get down to your local shop, pre-order it uh, through them, and it's out in January. So there you go. Uh, that's it for this week. Big week, giant week. I'm actually caught up with my books. Uh, my stack is over here. You can't see it. Um, but it's just like the dollar facsimile and giants um, and a handful of the stuff that I want to reread. Uh, so like Three Jokers, I'm going to reread because it's, it, I have the final issue and I want to just sit down and read it all together. Uh, as well as Dark Knight's Death Metal, the main part I've reread. Uh, and uh, so I'm caught up with that one, but I wanted to reread uh, Rorschach and Strange Adventures, but I'm, I'm stockpiling those. So like Strange Adventures, I have... I think six issues, so I'm going to sit down and, and reread those pretty soon. Uh, and Rorschach is, again, it's slowly coming out, so I'll eventually get to rereading it. But, yeah, so uh, that is it for this week. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking, uh, and uh, let me know what you're checking out. If you have any questions, leave those there. Uh, you can listen to me on the Comics Conspiracy Podcast. We just recorded episode 473, um, and, uh, yeah you can uh, listen to us uh, basically get crashed by Bryce Larson. So fun times there. Uh, you can help me and my fellow conspirators out through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash comics conspiracy. For as little as a dollar a month, you help us with posting fees, getting food, or no, we don't do that anymore, and getting products. So thank you very much to all of our Patreon backers. It helps out immensely. If you want to help me out a little more directly, you can click on any of the Amazon links here or at conspiratorbrock.com. Again, that She-Hulk Omnibus, I'll leave a link in the description below. It is dirt cheap on pre-order, so get on it if you want it. 
Uh, and so, yeah, so link in the description below, but uh, it's also the, the ad on um, conspiratorbrock.com. And you can also go to my eBay page where I'm purging out stuff. I need to get a couple more things up, hopefully this weekend. And uh, yeah, you can normally follow me on Twitter, but my account's still suspended. It's been, it's uh, got over two weeks now. So we'll see if that gets unsuspended anytime soon. If anybody knows anyone who works at Twitter or Twitter support, hey, help me out. Um, but yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I will see you guys next week.